let's take a look at the next topic, and that would be the integrated rate laws. Up to this point, everything we've done has been looking at the effect of concentration on the rate. So it's been concentration rate, concentration rate. Many of the graphs and charts we've been all looking at have been focused on concentration and rate. So let's instead now change gears and start looking at the relationship between concentration and time. So looking at concentration of time, again, if we take a look at our uh, graph here changing over time, we see that the concentration of the blue material A slowly decreases over time quite regularly, and we see A, B growing in. And you see that it decreases really quickly, and then it sort of starts to taper off and taper off. And then the, the, the rate, the speed at which it decreases eventually will eventually ultimately drop down to zero decreases 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 so we can we can see this stuff material over time and we have the graph on the right showing how quickly the material levels off and then after effectively after seven minutes after seven or eight minutes, there's no B left. A left, only B. <clears throat> See this rapid slope decreasing to down to near zero. This is very common for chemical reactions. They sort of decom uh, their speed decreases with time. Uh, now, how do we get at this? Well, this it turns out that this time relationship is actually quite consistent. We can mathematically derive this change in rate as a function of time. <clears throat> so notice that we've switched from a concentration domain to the rate to a concentration and time relationship. Now, concentration per time is rate, and so within this is buried rate information as well. And so we can figure out what the rate is at a given instant, but we can also use it to relate how long something takes. For each of the common rate laws, all right, we, have a, we have our first order reaction. We have our second order reaction. Sorry, zeroth order. These are the, the three most common types of rate laws we're going to see. The form of the differential rate law would look like rate is equal to k times the concentration of A, and we're just going to do everything in terms of A. For the second order rate law, rate would equal k times A to the second order. And for the zeroth order rate law, the rate would equal k a to the 0, which would equal k, because a to the 0 is equal to 1. Right. So this is the differential form. It turns out that the this is a differential equation. You can actually integrate and obtain a different form that looks like this. An alternate form is the integrated rate laws. Find that in the case of a first order reaction, this is equal to the natural log of the concentration at time t will become equal to the natural log of the concentration at time 0 minus a constant times the time. Now, typically the units for this rate constant are reported in inverse molarity per unit time, but this could be seconds, this could be hours, Right. So, so any other time, this could be days for all we care. And we just have to make sure that when we express our time, we express it in the correct units. <clears throat> so this is the initial concentration, and this is natural logarithm. And this is different from the log function on your calculator. This is the natural log. So we have to make sure that we use, on these types of calculators, the natural log function. And that will allow us to um, take those values and figure out what those are. 
these become numerical numerical values and they usually um, allows us to express these values in the appropriate manner what it allows us to do is predict the concentration uh, of the sample after a certain amount of time or ex predict when you have a concentration of say 10 percent um, molarity some value so these are the kind of things we'll be looking for relating concentration to time right. how what will the concentration be after 30 minutes that kind of thing and so we're looking for concentration time relationships and we can use this to actually determine the rate constant and vice versa we can use the rate constant and an initial concentration to figure out um, the time it would take for a reaction to progress now this is the integrated rate law for the first order reaction we have to know its first order for this to actually work the second order reaction has a slightly different form 1 over a at time t will be equal to 1 over a naught plus kt again where this would represent the initial concentration and this would represent the concentration at time t or the final concentration depending on how you look at it the zeroth order rate law is also different a at time t is equal to a at time zero minus k times t each of these are different they all have the same form though that approximates a linear equation where y is equal to mx plus b when we can use that information and appropriate plots of concentration versus time will allow us to extract out information about k but we have to have the right form and we have to know which reaction to use you should memorize these three rate laws the integrated forms. You should know which is associated with a first order reaction, which is associated with the second order reaction, etc. Now what this allows, given the right information, we can plot concentration data versus time and start to get out our rate constants. But I know I know what you're asking here. Dan, Dan, I mean how do I know which order it is? Well, that's that's the secret, right? Figuring out which order. It turns out, though, that you don't have to go back to the um, the the initial rate method. What you can do is what chemists often do: you cheat. You pretend that it's first order. You pretend that it's second order. You pretend that it's zeroth order, and you plot the data in an appropriate fashion, and you find out what the best plot is. And from that, you can extract uh, information. So let's take a look at some of those plots and what they look like. This is a good time to go to the internet and download the Excel document associated with this section of lecture. Uh, it can be found on the Blackboard website, or if you're watching this some other way, um, you can follow the bit.ly link. Um, bit.ly uh, uh, backslash integrated underscore rate underscore law integrated rate laws and uh, have a link in the text here and this is an Excel document don't open it in Google Docs best thing to do is save it to your hard drive and then open it with you know, Excel and this lists much of the data included in this uh, in this so if you've downloaded the Excel file, you should see 
something along the lines. You'll see if you have Excel document, you open it up. There are actually a series of tabs for this, and the ones we care about are uh, probably the first one at the moment. If we take a look at this second tab, molarity versus time, number five, what we see is our expected graph, the molarity of our component changing with respect to time. In the previous example, I mentioned pseudo first order conditions. And the reason I mentioned that is because usually when we deal with the integrated rate laws, measuring concentration versus time, we're only looking at a single component at a time. So even though if we have multiple reactants, we usually only work, look at one reactant at a time. And the way we do this is using pseudo first order conditions. We peg out the concentration of everything else and then just look at changes in the concentration of the species of interest to get uh, information regarding that species, which is quite different from our, our initial rate method, which uses multiple reactions to measure. So here we can do everything all in one reaction. We can measure the rate, the component, all at the same time. So if you think about it, you know, we we're measuring one concentration, that's one concentration, measure the rate. Another concentration, measure its rate. So we're actually doing multiple rate measurements all at the same, within the same reaction mixture with the rate being the, the slope of this line at any given point. Now, mathematically figure out the equation for this line, and this tells us the concentration at any given time. This is, this is integration and derivatives. That's all it is. It's, it's property of calculus. Fundamental, fundamental theorem of calculus right there. Uh, the, the two are related. 